Well, let's see the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Uh, let's check out the pages of the National Dailies. We call it Off the Press. At this point, we have Gide Johnson who joins the conversation. Gide, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, good morning, Mercy and Kofi, and good morning to you and everybody more. All right, then. Uh, we take a look at the leadership newspaper. It's been made available by a paper vendor, and uh, looking at it, you, you have the bold caption talking about a third term ambition. I can't dare Nigerians with a third term. President Mohamed Buhari tells United Kingdom Prime Minister, of course, and uh, says the last person who tried it did not end well. Rules out another bill for Kanu. United Kingdom pledges military support against Boko Haram terrorism. And that's it on uh, the board caption for the leadership. PNID fraud court vet convicts and winds up uh, the Nigerian Limited. Mark Court Nigerian Limited, if I'm not mistaken. Senatorial race, Fala no fault APC over submission of Lawan Akpabio's name. And you have Ekwere Madu, wife remanded in United Kingdom prison over alleged organ harvesting. And hijab, lawyer appears in herbalist attire at a Supreme Court. I mean, others would say he, according to him, is saying he's a traditionalist. Fuel scarcity, Ibman decries profiteering at private depots and train attack. We are in hell over my husband's abduction. A wife cries out. Amoteko arrests suspected mastermind of our attack and recovers weapons. And the question of the legality of the actions of Amoteko has also been questioned right here. But that's the much we can take this morning on the leadership. Let's go straight to the Punch newspaper with these headlines. Uh, the big one on the Punch newspaper, uh, aggrieved National Assembly members plan showdown with governors over lost tickets. Aggrieved National Assembly members plan showdown with uh, governors over lost tickets. Uh, and the writers to that story, senators who lost tickets to governors, aids a plan for governorship, uh, National Assembly battles. Senators who lost tickets to governors' aides, a plan for governorship, National Assembly battles. Abiodun Faimi, Okoa's aides, triumph in Ogun Delta, Egiti, and Amosun's men lose out. Zamfara reps clinch PDP tickets after dumping APC accuse ruling party of cheating. More from the Punch newspaper. Marketers notify federal government on planned fuel price hike. Queues persist. The details on page 19, I think the queues are softening, you know, from what I can see, at least in Lagos State. Uh, Southern, Southern leaders didn't agree on zone to produce President Okoa. Southern leaders didn't agree on zone to produce President Okoa. Wike meets Orubebe PDP senators. Wike meets Orubebe PDP senators. It should be, uh, I think, the third or fourth of such meetings in the last uh, five days, um, which can be described as the bright of uh, Nigerian politics right now. Alleged organ trafficking, uh, Ekwere Madu, wife, risk losing a uh, risk long jail term. Alleged organ trafficking, Ekwere Madu, wife, risk long jail term. And we have a few more stories from that paper. Uh, poly lecturers meet July 3, may resume strike. Poly lecturers meet July 3, May resume strike. We'll leave it at that for now with the headlines on the front page of The Punch. Well, away from The Punch, we have The Guardian newspaper this morning. Federal government auto gas plan stalls amid costly diesel and poor planning. That's boldly written on The Guardian. Underneath, you have several riders. Failure for straight conversation or conversion scheme from diesel to CNG and petrol engines. Federal government explains progress despite low enrollment. We can't afford 5 million naira truck conversion rate, uh, the NARTO says. And Ipman, without petrol subsidy, Nigerians would have been paying 900 naira per liter. Interesting. You also have another caption, a motor coup arrests suspecting a war attack, recovers car and ammunition. And families of Abuja Kaduna train abductees says victim planning suicide. United Kingdom confirms first vaccine-derived 
poliovirus in 38 years and uh, drama's lawyer appears in Supreme Court in traditional attire might just be dominating all of the papers. Again, you find United Kingdom court denies Ikora Madu wife bail over child trafficking and organ harvesting. Why Nigeria has one of its worst of one of the world's worst vaccination rates. These are the headlines on The Guardian. Let's uh, I'll bring this uh, home with uh, a look at stories coming on the front page of The Nation. A big one there. Detained Ikori Madu wife risk 10-year jail in UK. Detained Ikori Madu wife risk 10-year jail in UK. It's uh, quite a, a bizarre one that I don't think they saw coming. That would be uh, uh, quite, quite, quite a, a big splash. Uh, the writer to that story, couple arrested at the airport in presence of high commission officials, uh, remanded till July 7 over allegations of organ harvesting others. So these are uh, commission, uh, officials of the Nigerian High Commission in, in London. Uh, more from the nation. Police Omoteko disagree over arrest of all attack suspects. 70,000 ghost workers flushed out of civil service. Um, you can see a picture there. I think this should be the head of service or your house to set to determine deputy governor's fate. A bit of uh, infighting or uh, rumors of um, a bit of defections there, rumors of defection. Uh, MTN, MAFAB get August 24 deadline to roll out 5G. These are is referring to those who got the license um, for 5G rollout in the country. Defections, why senators reps may lose seats. Uh, there should be the picture there of Ainaya uh, Barbie and of course uh, Abdullahi who have defected. Uh, we'll leave it at that and we move straight to our guest uh, who is standing by um, and of course uh, he is uh, G.D. Johnson. We're glad to have you G.D. Johnson and um, let's start with a big one uh, coming on the front page of the nation at the Punch newspaper, sorry about that, uh, talking about aggrieved National Assembly members planning showdown with their governors over the lost ticket. Um, some, you know, suspected that the National Assembly members uh, um, reason behind some of the, uh, the, the clauses they included in the initial uh, electoral act that the president refused to sign uh, was so that they could be protected from the influence and power of the governors and thereby having a better chance of returning uh, back to the National Assembly. What, what do you make of this current situation with the benefit of hindsight? Well, they shot themselves in the electoral, the electoral Act of 2022. And in the process, they were looking for a discovery to be so they introduced an amendment which was not um, eventually sent to by the president. Michael, it's a cycle that we have witnessed and we will continue to witness it because the power blocks and the political parties are the government. So this cycle, every electoral cycle is national assembly members losing out to the government. It has been a cycle that has characterized the portfolio. Hopefully we have a sensible and a, a, a same quality whereby um, the people themselves will select or elect people represent them at the level. I think the election we should be interested in is the election to the National Assembly. We are politics and government programs are, 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 are debated and are, are, are ratified for the exit. Go about with it. So, but what we have seen the, the National Assembly become the retirement of government. Uh, to be a, a compensatory reward for 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 lawyer aids, and that's why in one of the lives, um, national assembly member loses seats to problem inspiring how they so. All right, uh, Jida Johnson. Let's take a, a quick look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, on the leadership newspaper, uh, top right, it talks about the senatorial race and how Falano faults APC over the submission of uh, Lawan and Apabio's name for the race. I mean, uh, do you agree with him? According to him, he said it's, it's actually, he described that as an impunity of the APC to submit their names uh, for 
uh, the senatorial race, especially when they didn't contest for that election? That's why we have the laws, and that's why we have institution. The relevant institution would deal with that. Obviously, uh, lost the, the ability to contest in Zamfara State in 2019. It almost ran into trouble in rivers. They, they lost the opportunity to present the candidate across the board. So it's very clear, even we didn't have a, a spending the electoral act then, the one we're in 2011, the 22 electoral act is explicit with respect to that. We need to be convinced how, how Lawan, Ahmed Lawan participated in the UK, in the UK North senatorial election and how participated in the acquired bond northwest senatorial district election. It's, it's, it's the degree of impunity that has characterized the quality. If people do not have respect for the constitution of their party, when they get to government, they will not have respect for the constitution of Nigeria. We have said it over and over and over again. How can somebody run for two offices at the same time in the same electoral cycle? So is the person playing lottery? Is he playing lottery? So if such people are elected into public office, they will play lottery with the lives of Nigeria. Ted or T, you win. It makes me to remember one iconic Indian Indian movie, Sholi. <laughs> so whichever way it goes, whichever way you roll the point, they win. It's, 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 it's insulting. It's insulting to the sensitivity of Nigeria. And those that are involved in that, they have no shit. All right. Th thank you very much. Let them agree. agree from after they let them go to court. Let them approach the court. They'll get their ticket. Let them allow them to vote for them. They'll get their <laughs> Interesting one. Um, let, the, interesting one. Thank you very much, J.D. Uh, uh, um, Johnson. Let's move on um, to, to more issues. The field queues are still here with us in Lagos State and in other parts of the country, though it seems to be... Um, uh, reducing a little bit from what I observed this morning. But the leadership newspaper tells us, uh, it dedicates some space to this particular uh, uh, story. Uh, fuel scarcity, Ipman decries profiteering at private depots. Um, whilst you may not have an Ipman, of, you may not be a member of Ipman, but I'm sure you can appreciate and are very, very aware of the happenings in the sector. So what are, what are your thoughts on this? Because we have not even fully recovered or handled or dealt with the dirty fuel um, uh, saga, and when we have this fuel scarcity, Ipman decries profiteering at a private depot. You see, as long as you have this system in place, this corrupt system, all relying on foreign imports and government to gain subsidy on petroleum products, uh, specifically in, um, on, on, on premium motor spirit, which is petrol. We have what we have this age we are doing. The best solution to this problem is for government basically we are not paying subsidy for the next two years. Nigeria has to go through this pain. However, we are going to invest this money in in in, in, in building new refineries, building new refineries across across the government of Nigeria. After that three, four, five years period of you paying high price, you start paying. But you know what? People are benefiting from the from the, from the corrupt system. Who is paying each subsidy? President himself, before he became president, said that if anyone says he's paying subsidy, is this criteria? So you what you begin to wonder how how do we, in fact you look at what they say we consume on daily basis, and you ask yourself how are we consuming this? We, we Uh, um, Jide Johnson, let's also... The solution to it is for us to put to build our refineries. That's just it. All right. Let's quickly share your thoughts on this one. I mean, we talked about it. Uh, the lawyer that appeared in Supreme Court in his traditional attire. Uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, what, what do you think about this? In, it, in all of this, he, he seemed to be protesting the 
uh, judgment of the Supreme Court that's in favor of Muslim students who can wear the hijab in Lagos? Well, when you know, when you bring that identity into your journey, you create this type of problem. When the Supreme Court made that, prior to that, you recall this was a nice in you know choose under Arab second story. This is still an ongoing crisis in Kwara State. Information school saying that they need to wear a job. And I said it that look, for us in the southwest, we are we, we are we are traditional. We have we have traditions. Religion is not limited to two imported religions from from, from, from from the Middle East, the Christian faith. And it's not, in actual sense, the Abrahamic, the Abrahamic religion, a tree, Abraham himself was from the family of traditionally, before he gave birth to two children, the Israel from whom the Islamic faith developed from, and to Isaac from whom the Christian faith developed from. Imagine people going to, to, to court with their shaki, or students going to school with their shaki. If you know what the call shaki, it's a bony, Botanic kind of dressing in the in, 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 in the southwest. What's the essence of uniform in school? What's the essence of? It's just that you don't distinguish one from another. You don't distinguish them on the basis of religion. For example, if I'm a Muslim, it's easy for me to identify Muslim students in my class because they're having a job, and I can develop a comparison to them. Or if I'm a Christian, it is easy for me to distinguish the Muslim from the Christian and show favoritism to to them. And even as a judge, I'm sitting in court and you brought cases before me. And if somebody is putting on a job and someone is not putting on a job, someone is dressing in African traditional religion or what have you. Is it easier for my religion, personal judge, personal biases to come into play? That's why you ask people to wear the same thing to keep on. That then you can't distinguish on the basis of religion, you can't distinguish on the basis of race, you can't distinguish on the basis of whatever form of identity you want to use to distinguish people. And that's the madness the Supreme Court has created. And let's continue with the madness and let people begin to enjoy it. All right, uh, uh, we have uh, the front page uh, uh, story on the, on the Punch newspaper, um, paying attention to the education sector. Um, Poly lecturers meet July 3 may resume strike. Polytechnic lecturers, that is, meet July 3 may resume uh, strike. And talking about meetings, um, it was uh, on, on, on Wednesday after the Federal Executive Council meeting, Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Senator Dr. <laughs> Chris Singigi, addressed the press and told the press that um, ASU had been meeting with the federal government. They've been meeting with ASU. And in fact, they have a meeting on Thursday. Um, I'm sure you're, you're well aware of, of, of this development, Jide. And uh, um, Asu later replied saying that they, were, they have no official limitation by the federal government to any meeting whatsoever on Thursday. And this is coming after Education Minister Damo Damo said Asu will soon end the strike. They'll make an announcement at the end of the month. And Asu said, hey, we have no, we're not making an announcement. Why are you speaking for us? Uh, Chris Ngege also made a point at that time. Um, uh, fake news briefing or press briefing, saying that yes, they'll meet with Asu, they're going to attend to them, that after they give Asu their money, they know he knows that the polytechnic lecturers will come. After they're done with the polytechnic lecturers, he knows that the doctors will come. After they're done with the doctors, he knows that the nurses will come, and so on and so forth. W what do you say about the state of education in Nigeria, especially coming three days, this news coming three days after President Buhari congratulated Afe Babalola University and its chancellor for emerging the 400th best, uni best university in the world and uh, number one in Nigeria. Uh, look, let's look at um, the minister. We can start to talk to Governor, Senator, Minister, Kusingigi. Let's look at the various offices that occupy in this fourth republic. These people are far away from reality. They are far, far away from their including of education. It's unfortunate that we have found ourselves in a situation where we have found ourselves, where people are less concerned with what happened. How can you have a point whereby the university lecturers will go on strike? Doctors will go 
go on strike. Polytechnic lecturer are trying to go on strike. And someone will still be parading himself as a minister. And will be proud to call himself the minister. It is unfortunate. So in in other time, they will have resigned. That was it. The, the word the failure in Nigeria will be what failure. And we reinforce ineptitude. That's just the problem. Because based on the performance of some of the ministers in their first that in the first time of Buhari administration, we are told that Buhari will not nominate them again to minister in the second term. But we have the continuity and perpetuity of incompetence at various levels. And Nigerian children are paying for it. They are destroying the future. Look, there's nothing that can redeem the time these kids and these students have lost over time. Why did Afri Babola get ranked for the world and first in Nigeria? Because they don't go on strike. And they employ people on the basis of competence and merit. The people in Abuja don't go, don't go and carry placards or appear on TV programs to say that the VC of Abuja Babala must come from Abuja, like the nonsense we had in the University of Ife, where people from Ife were protesting the appointment of a non Ife indigenous to be the VC of University of Ife. This is it, 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 it's, it's not the way. Our policy has been in the educational sector, in the social sector. Which sector is actually working in Nigeria? In the power sector. All right, uh, quickly, let's look at this. Feels like we've been avoiding it. Uh, on the leadership newspaper, I can't dare Nigerians with a thought term. Uh, President Mohammed Buhari tells the United Kingdom Prime Minister, why, why should we be talking about the I mean, the known already, it's very obvious that, you know, the president should not. It's a democratic process. We're thinking about the thought term, but it feels like we keep talking about what we know already. If, um, um, if there's, no, there's no smoke without fire, because I can't dare, that's what the president, I can't, not I won't, dare. Are you, I, I, I'm just analyzing the statement. Then in the first instance, why will you entertain? Why, why will you make such statement if you have not entertained the thought? It's only a madman that talks without thinking. Thinking is its topic. Whatever comes out of your mouth in terms of speech is a product of your thought. Are there people thinking about short term for PMD in Nigeria? That should be a red flag for people to, to be much more. Concern. And then look at the second part of, of, of our statement. He said, the person that tried it in the past, it did not end well. So if there are positives from the last person that tried it, probably we, 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 they will have tried it now. It's, 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 there are some certain things that you don't really entertain. It's even, it should be discussed that whoever is thinking of that is just a figment of that person's imagination. That has never been the plan of our administration. And there should have been a statement from the presidency with respect to this. So much for your time and uh, for so mercy, your expertise. Those that are thinking of talking for the president, I don't see that time. Nigeria is a constitutional democracy, and a constitutional democracy is tenor. And the tenor of this president will end in 2029. May 29, 2023, and the process to replace this president democratically has started with the party's primaries conducted. We are just for thank the thank you, Jerry Johnson. We, we have to go. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, have a fantastic weekend, and we can't wait to have you join us again next week. Next week. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Well, that's the size of our conversation. Thank you so much for being part of Off the Press. We will return on Monday. This is the last for the week. And uh, we take a break now. When we return, it'll be time for us to head straight to our first major conversation right here, where we look at uh, the, uh, you know, the case with Ike Ekuramadu and his wife. Stay with us. <laughs>